of the law. And we're going to pick this up at Exodus 20 and read it from 1 to the 17. And when you're ready for jail, go ahead and do it. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. All right, now let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yes, yes, and now we're going to read Revelations, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. Praise God. Well, let's give a great big round of applause for the commandments. Yeah. It's in the reading, brother. And the Lord is letting us know, people, that the only way to God's kingdom is keeping his commandments. Don't never let nobody tell you that the commandments ain't no more and it ain't no good, because if they do, they're trying to take your salvation. Commandments is the only way into God's kingdom. Don't ever let nobody change your mind on that principle. And uh, I want to say welcome, everybody. My name is Brother Ray. Some of you may know me, some of you don't. But the thing is, uh, the Lord sent us down to deal with the word of God, me and Brother Fajel and Brother, my brothers that rolled down with me. Y'all stand up and let the people see you, because we can't do it without these guys. That's Buck, Dante, and I think another brother's out in the truck trying to get a little rest, because he came straight from work to get down here and see you people. That was a blessing. Praise God. It's all right. I see y'all got the new place looking good, and uh, I'm feeling good with being down. It's been a while since I've been down here, but I'm glad I'm back. And uh, praise God in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a great big round of applause. Huh? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. And uh, today, people, you know, we see a lot of things in the news and a lot of things that's going on and millions of people riding around and taking pictures of the sun and of the moon and everything. 
And I'm going to tell you, people, this thing is crazy, but I'm going to show you. I just want to share with you today that this thing is right on top of us, people. We're close. we at the end. And I mean, we got to stay focused now and stay close to that word of God. And today we're going to deal with a thing called the seven seals of God. Because some people say we're under the seals right now. But we can't be under the seals according to the word of God because we're going to see what the book say and where we at and what things to look for because the Lord left signs for his servants. And he said, when you see these things, know that my second coming is near. So don't try to use the numbers and listen to Nostradamus and these other prognosticators and all these people here. See what thus said the Lord, because he said he would do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants and prophets. And the apostles is testifying of what the, the, the prophets have already written. It's a repeat. Ain't nothing new. In fact, after the first five books, this the whole story was told. After that, ain't nothing but a repeat. Moses laid down everything. That's why you got to really take a close look at that word. But like I say, today's title is The Seven Seals of God. And listen, if, if any sisters in here that ain't got your head covered, cover your head, please. Cover your head up because this is the law of God also. We good? Are we good? Are we good? <laughs> I'm talking to you, little young lady. Okay. All right, so listen, we're going to start this lesson in uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter. Because right here, you can tell this is the signs the Lord left for his second coming. Because he don't want his servants to be in the dark. The book said God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And if you follow the Lord, you shouldn't be in darkness neither. But we're going to look and see what the Lord say about this seven seals of God. And Matthew 24, if you ain't got nothing but a little time, you can take somebody right here. Let me show you what's going to happen just before the Lord comes. This Matthew 24 laid out, but we just, we're going to go all over the book and show you so we can make sure we know exactly what time period we're in. Now, we're going to start this in Matthew 24 and verse 3. What did that say, Brother Fajal? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Well, that was a, a heck of a question there, wasn't it? What's going to be the sign? See, the Lord left signs for you to watch. What's going to be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Where are my, uh, 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 my, 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 uh, my media man in the, in the media room? Can you turn my reader up a little bit, please? Reader up. Me down just a tank, okay? Thank you, sir. And listen, I want to say one thing. The reason why I'm sitting down is because I got a bad hip. I can't stand. So I'm not trying to be cool or on no ego trip and look pretty. And all. I'm just trying to get to this thing in my right mind, okay? <laughs> so now, Jesus asked him, he said, look here, uh, what's going to be your sign of your second coming and of the end of the world? Because Jesus left us a sign. And this is what we're going to look at today, people, so you will know exactly what time period you're living in. But skip down to verse Read verse 4. What, is it? what was the first sign he gave us? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. You mean to tell me this is the first sign Jesus gave? Well, take heed and let no man deceive you because he know in these last days that deception is going to be running rapid. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People are going to be trying to take your crown for you because you're almost at the coming and the kingdom of God. So Satan on a rapid, he Knock that Bible out your hand. So he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Why? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Boy, that narrowed it down for us right there. So that let me know you ain't got to watch out for the Muslims. You ain't got to watch out for the Hare Christians or for the Buddhists. He said, watch out for those that's coming in the name of who? Christ. Christ. That's these Sunday morning preachers. He said, watch out for these guys, because they come and they're going to deceive many. They're using my name, but they're slipping that bad doctrine up on you. Ain't that something? Yeah. So that's a sign there. Who they coming in the name of? The name of Christ. So if he coming in trying to get you to 
Sir Buddha don't even pay no attention to him. But watch them boys. They use the name of Christ. Listen to what they say, but check their doctrine. If it ain't right, get your head and keep walking. But but now, what did it skip down to verse 7? What did it say? For nation shall rise against nation uh -huh. and kingdom against kingdom. Go ahead. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All right, what do they call this? All these are the beginning of sorrow. Ain't that something? So we ain't under the seals yet. We up under the signs of the second coming of the Lord. And one thing he says is going to be nation going to rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. That's why you're looking over there in Russia and uh, Ukraine. You're looking at Ishmael and Esau over there in the Middle East. You're looking over to Africa and you see the Tutsi is still fighting against Israel. Ethiopia is still destroying Israel. But it's wars and rumors of wars everywhere. And he said it's going to be earthquakes in divers places. Divers meaning what? Different. They had an earthquake in, uh, uh, what was that, Taiwan. Then they had one in New York. If that ain't dives, divers meeting different. If that ain't a different place, what is it, people? But what are these the signs of? The signs of the second coming of the Lord. Everything is right on time. All the players are on stage. We're really just waiting for a couple of more things. Well, pay attention and we're going to see what they is. What else did he say? Skip down to 13 now. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So when, when am I saved, people? At the end. Not a day before. So if I'm walking around saying I'm saved now, I'm not saved because you ain't going to be saved till when? The end. But now, skip down to verse 17. You read all this on your own time. We're just getting the high points because we got some scripture to deal with. But now, 17 verse, what did it say, Brother Fidel? Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. But you mean to tell me this time is going to be so urgent and so devastating that if you're on the top of your house, don't come down out of your house to take anything out of your house. You better start running before this time get here. Because if you get caught in this time, we're going to show you what they're going to call it. Go ahead and read. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. This sounds like urgency. You better get on out of here. This is what this is telling me. Go ahead and read. And born to them that are with child. Uh-huh. And to them that give suck in those days. Oh, because you can't fly. And you can't flee when you got a baby and it's wintertime, it's snowing, it's 30 below zero, you ain't got no pampers, no milk. Hey, it's a rough time to flee. But go ahead and read. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, uh -huh. neither on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, mm. no, nor ever shall be. Now, how many times can you have a time like it never was before and it never shall be again, people? This is why I know we ain't under the seals. Because when this time comes, people, it ain't going to be no time like it before and no time like it afterward. All the conscience that's taking place on this earth, the World War One, World War II, is nothing to be compared what is going to be done in this time. So when you get in the seals, people, you're going to know exactly where you're at. You're not going to have to guess and you're not going to have to speculate because this is going to be a time when our faith is going to be tried to the utmost. But it's a way to be delivered. But let's see now. So we got earthquakes and dive in place. Don't let no man deceive you. And if you on the housetop, don't go down to take anything out of your house. And he said, neither going back if you're in the field. But don't uh, let your flight be in the winter. Neither on the Sabbath day. What do they call this time, brother? 21. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So what is another time, a name for this time? Great tribulation. I mean, this tribulation is going to be so deep, it ain't going to be no time like it before. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to and take a look at this time. He said, Daniel, read that 15 verse again. What did it say, bro? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, uh -huh. whoso readeth, let him understand. That's right. So he said, when you, if you understand none of the signs that I left, understand this one. He said, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. What's the abomination? When the man of sin leave Rome and set his throne up in Jerusalem. 
That's the abomination. Abomination is a wicked act, and desolation is widespread destruction. And this is what this man is going to bring by his hand. Lord said, when you see this, let him understand. That's when you're going to have to flee. Not a time to flow. When? When I see the abomination that make him desolate. What is this time called? Great tribulation. He said it was spoken by Daniel the prophet. Let's go look in Daniel and see what he said now. Let's go to Daniel the 12th chapter. But remember now, it's going to be like a time like it never was before. And it never shall be again, people. How many times can you have a time like that? One time, and this is how I know we ain't under the seal. But now, Daniel 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We've got Daniel 12 and 1, and let's see what the book says. Because I tell you, if you the book ain't going to lie, it's going to let you know exactly what's happening. And that's why we got to stick to the book. Daniel 12 and verse 1. He says, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Okay, go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up, uh -huh. the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Michael is all, he's a, he's a captain of the Lord, so he's always fighting and watching over Israel. But go ahead and read. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Now how many times can you have a time like that, people? One time. One time. Everybody's telling you about this time. Everybody knew about this time except for us living in this time. That's what the spooky thing is. But now, and what else did he say, brother? And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Uh-huh. Every one that shall be found written in the book. That's right, because either you found written in the book, or unless your name going to be blotted out. But if it's written in there, don't get too comfortable, because it can be blotted out by your action. But go ahead and read now. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Uh-huh. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. But he said, many of them that sleep in the dust, I thought everybody was in heaven. They in the dust, but they gonna wake. Some to everlasting life, and some to everlasting shame and contempt. But go ahead and read, my brother. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Uh huh. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That's why you always get out there and preach. Tell everybody about this thing. Because those that turn many to righteousness is going to shine like the brightness of the sun. Like that's something you'll be shining like the sun. This is the way that spiritual body is shine. Mm -hmm. It glows. But he said, Dad, you told you about that time. Like it's never going to be like a time like it was before and it never shall be again, people. Same thing Matthew told you. But we can only have that time one time. Now let's go to Daniel 11 and look at this. Back up to Daniel 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 31. Daniel 11 and 31. Y'all with me? All right. Praise the Lord. Daniel 11 and 31. Because well, he said Daniel spoke about this thing. We got to check with Daniel to see what he said now. Okay. Go ahead. And the arms shall stand on his part. Uh-huh. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Go ahead. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. What? So what's got to happen before the daily, before the abomination that make it desolate? The daily sacrifice. So when you see them start sacrificing, you know what? I got an article on my phone. They sent me a, a text. When the Edomites got the red heifer, they got everything. They ready to go on building the temple and everything. They even got the temple site marked out mm -hmm. right on the, the co outside courts. Like the Lord said, he's going to tell you in Revelation 11. They got it measured out and already marked, people. And once they put that up, it's going to be maybe a couple of years before the abomination that make it dust be placed. And then from that time, three and a half years later, we're going to be looking at the Lord. So you know, 10, 7, 8 years will blow bad like you didn't know it, people. I'm telling you, young folks, I used to be one of the most robust young characters. <laughs> I, I wish a cat would mess with but boy, I look around now, I can't hardly get out of bed. I, I, I hope don't nobody say nothing to me when I go to the store. But hey, time will get away from you. So do all you can while you're young. Because when you, that old man river is creeping up on you like with a motorcycle. But yes, yes, yes. But this is the thing now. But, but now, the Lord said, look here now. Arms um, shall stand on this part, and they're going to set up that daily sacrifice 
and then they're going to place that abomination and make it desolate. And we're going to show you what that is now. But now, we see that this thing, Daniel said it's going to be like a time like it never was before and it never shall be again. Let's look at that one more time. Let's go to Jeremiah 30. And remember now, people, we read this. This ain't something old Ray making up. We read, this is what does say the Lord. You can take it to the bank. I mean, that's why we got the books. We read it with your own eyes. Jeremiah 30. And we can't see how long this time of trouble is going to be. One more time. Jeremiah 30 and verse 1. What did it say? The words that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, uh -huh. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Go ahead. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, yes, sir. saith the Lord. Uh -huh. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. That's right. And when, that's when Israel is going to be gathered to win when that seventh trumpet is blown. Not a day before, but it's almost here. But now, skip down to verse 6. Hey, keep reading. What did it say? Ask ye now. And see whether a man doth travail with child. Wait a minute now. This is like a woman having a baby. So a man got to be in real pain because I heard that's real pain. But go ahead and read. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins uh -huh. as a woman in travail? Go ahead. And all faces are turned into paleness. Why is everybody born in the paleness and the travailing in birth like they ain't pain to be delivered? Why? Go ahead and read. Alas, for that great... For that day is great, so that none is like it. What? It how is, it is the even the time of Jacob's trouble. How, you, how many times can we have a time like it never was before? One time. One time. We didn't seen that three times. The Lord let you know when this tribulation comes, it's going to be like a time like it never was before, and it never shall be again. But it's also called the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm hmm and I don't know if y'all knows it. They bring in all kind of machines and equipment and everything in to replace you as workers. You hear what I'm saying? This thing is coming down to the end. But the one ace card that you got in your back pocket is the Lord God of Israel. Indeed. I'm talking about Jesus. This is how we're going to get through this thing. But what is this time called? The time of Jacob's trouble. It's a terrible time. Now let's go back. And it can only be like this one time. Let's go and check out Matthew 24 again, because I want you to make sure. In fact, put your mark in that 24th chapter of Matthew, because we're going to be in and out of that all afternoon. Matthew 24, but this time we're going to start at verse 15. We're going to read 15, and we're going to skip to 21, and then we're going to move on. Because we're trying to stay focused and know what we're looking at, because we don't want to be confused on this, because this is one of the biggest events that's going to take place on earth other than the second coming. But now, Matthew 24 and 15, what does it say, Brother Fajal? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. That's right. He's going to stand in the holy place, which is Jerusalem. But now skip down to 21 and read that, what they call this again. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no, nor ever shall be. So they're letting us know it's going to be a terrible time. And let me know when they get here, you're not going to have to guess and speculate. I wonder if we under the sea. You're going to know. You can smell the rubber from your shoes if you get left over here. Mark 13 now, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Mark 13 and 10 now. Looking at the same time. So certain things must take place before the Lord can come. And before that daily sacrifice got to be set up. The abomination that make up destiny got to be placed. Wars and rumors of wars. Nation against nation. Prophets going out where deceiving everybody. There's a lot of stuff going on. But let's see what Mark said now. Mark 13 and 10. Okay, go ahead. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Oh, so that's another thing that's holding this thing up. The gospel must be published among all nations. But thank God for that internet. It is running all over the world. But this gospel got to be preached in all the world for witnessing to all nations. But go ahead and read now. 
But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Ain't that something? So when they deliver you up, don't take no thought what you're going to say. But you know, in the meantime, make sure you read your book. So you got something up in there for the Holy Ghost to bring forth. You see what I'm saying? Ain't no need looking in the refrigerator if ain't no food in there. And if Holy Ghost ain't going up in your mind looking for nothing if it ain't there, this is the time to read this book like you never did before. I'm talking about men and women and children too. Mm -hmm. This is your wisdom, your might, and your understanding and among the nations. Nation. You hear what I'm saying? But he said now, don't even take no thought, but what else is going to be happening during this time? Verse 12, go ahead. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, uh -huh. and the father the son. Oh, my God. Go ahead. And children shall rise up against their parents what? And, sh and shall cause them to be put to death. Now, we know that ain't happening now, is it? I mean, some of the children's riding, you might try to slap your mama or something like that, which is crazy. But we're not putting it. The children is not putting the parents to death. You hear what I'm saying? Can you see how it escalates to this thing? It's going to get so deep. Children killing the parents. We, we ain't too far from that, people. Right. Look around. Look at the news. That's why the Lord say, watch. Watch. I say it to you all. Watch. Watch what? Watch for the signs that the Lord the left to let you know when he gets ready to come. Now, verse 13, what did he say? What else is going to be happening? And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Why they gonna hate you? Why do they hate you? Go ahead. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And it's only one reason why they hate you people, because you're speaking the true word of God. The Israel of God has got these false prophets on the run like they ain't never ran before. Because somebody done mess around and laid that Bible on the table. And this is what time it is. But now, he said... But you got to endure to the end that you want to be saved, because it's going to be a terrible time. But what that 14th verse say, what did it say? But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. Oh, where is he going to stand where y'all not over there in Jerusalem? Go ahead and read. Let him that readeth understand. Uh huh. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Go ahead. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house. Neither enter therein uh -huh. to take anything out of his house. Go ahead. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. Go ahead. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Uh huh. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Uh huh. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. You mean to tell me ain't going to be like no time like this since the beginning of the creation? Is this going to be a time, people? Mm -hmm. and, and people think you up under the fourth seal now? If you was up under, you would know. People would nobody tell you nothing. You would know. It's that thing going to grab you by your throat and throw you on the ground. You think you ain't going to know that? But the thing is, if you stick close to the Lord, you can't escape it. But look what he said now. 20th verse. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. Thank God he shortened them. But why did he shorten them? But for the elect's sake, whom he had chosen, he had shortened the days. That's right. And you know what? This is another sign. He shortened the days. Look how fast these Sabbaths is blowing by. Mm -hmm. The month is racing by. Winter blow by so fast, I put my shorts up next to I know I had to get them back out and put them back on. Time is flying. But that's another sign that the Lord is on his way, people. He said, if he didn't join the days, would no flesh be saved. Ain't that something? That's why it's time to take a close look at that Bible, people. Because it's screaming and letting you know what time it is. But now let's go to Revelation 5, because everybody's crying. Now, what should we do? It's getting close. The Lord is almost here. What can I do, Ray? How can I fix this thing? Let's go to Revelation and see what we can do. Revelation 5. That's what I love about the Lord. He got all the answers in the Word. All you got to do is 
read it and believe it. But thank God we found a teacher in Brother Boo at that Israel of God. Yes. And he, Lord, got him doing a wonderful God. We part of a great ministry, people. The Israel of God, the Lord is raising up his church. And I'm telling you to remember one thing about the church of God. He said, his house is going to be called a house of prayer for all people. For all people. And that's what I love about Jesus. But now, Revelation 5, what can we do, Ray? How can we escape this thing? What do we need to do? Revelation 5 and 1. Okay, go in. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. It's seven seals. And this lesson is called the seven seals of God. But wait a minute now. It's written on the backside, on the front. It's that same book you got in your lap right now, people. But it's sealed with seven seals. And let's see how can we get it. Go ahead and read. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, uh -huh. who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Who is worthy? Go ahead and read. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, uh -huh. was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. You can't open You can open it. You can look at it tell you. You can read it for 50 years. If Jesus don't open it up for you, you just be reading. You ain't understanding nothing. How can you read the book of 50 years and don't turn around and tell me the Sabbath day is Sunday? How are you going to tell me you're going to heaven when all over the book he's going to set the kingdom up on earth? And let me know one thing, the book is sealed to you because you won't humble yourself to the Lord and bow down before Jesus and let him open the book up for you. You're trying to do it yourself. But go ahead and read, fourth verse. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon. Go ahead. And one of the elders says unto me, weep not. Uh -huh. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. The root of David had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Thank God. Who is it? The root of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who is it? Jesus. He can open the book for you. Thank God. He can't do it by yourself. And when I hear people talking, I know they're in error. I know one thing. Jesus did not open the book up for you. You got to humble yourself to the Lord. Bow down before the Lord and he will lift you up. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord takes. But he's going to do it with his word through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So now, verse 6 now. We found somebody can open the book. We got to go to him so he can tell us what to do. Six verse. Go ahead. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. What are these? Go ahead. the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And you know what they call these? The, the eyes of the Lord. These seven spirits, they police this whole earth. They watch everything. They in every nook and cranny. When you think you're alone, you can dig down up in a cave and put a wall in front of it. That angel sitting right in there with you. You could be at the dew drop in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, way in some server. That angel of the Lord is right in there. He's writing it down. This dew drop, that sister's name, so and so, and she's married, and the brother's married too. And guess what? On Judgment Day, the book's going to be opened up on them. That's what you got to be careful. That's what people don't know. The Lord is watching and marking everything that you do. They nobody. He says it's going to come a time when your secrecy is going to be judged. And you know what your secret sins is? That's your sins only you and the Lord know. Hey, you might see me. I'm pristine clean out here at the roster. But behind closed doors, I might be one of the monsters cats you ever seen in your life. Hope that ain't the case. But it's the truth. It's something you got to look for. And whether you start looking first, in yourself. But now, he said, they were seven spirits of God. Seven verse. Go ahead and read now. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. That's right. He's letting you know. This is symbolism showing you where the Lord is getting his information from. The Father, while he's in the flesh. He, that's where he's getting it from. Go ahead and read. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, uh -huh. having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Go ahead. What did they say? Go ahead. And they sung a new song, saying, 
Thou art worthy to take the book uh -huh. and to open the seals thereof. Go ahead. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's why he tried to redeem all of the sons of Adam. Because he said, I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But go ahead and read now. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Uh-huh. And we shall reign on the earth. Where are we going to reign at? On the earth. On the earth. So come on out of heaven as soon as you can because you're going to miss this whole thing. But now, <laughs> the Lord is getting ready to open one of the seals. But before he do, let's check out something else. Let's go to Isaiah 29. Thank the Lord for his words. See, people, all you got to do is read this word. The Lord has told you everything that's pertaining to life, that's pertaining to godliness. Letting you know where they're going to come. Letting you know what you got to do to get your house in order. But we got one problem. We ain't reading the book. I heard choir sing songs. Someone, we need to hear a word from you. He done left a whole book. What else do you need, man? <laughs> when are we going to start reading the book? That's what we need to do. But Isaiah 29 and 9 now. 29 and 9. We see that Jesus can open up this book because we can see it sealed. And can't nobody open it but the Lamb, the Lion of Judah. Isaiah 29 and 9. What did that say, brother? Stay yourselves in wonder. Uh-huh. Cry ye out and cry. Go ahead. They are drunken, but not with wine. Uh-huh. They stagger, but not with strong drink. How you going to be drunk and ain't got a bottle of whiskey in the house no while? It ain't got no, what is you drunk off of? You know what you drunk off of? False doctrine. False religion. I'd rather be drunk off whiskey and wine than when I wake up in the morning, I still be in my right mind. Got to be drunk off of false religion and think I'm sober. The worst thing in the world is some guy thinking he's sober when he's drunk. You can't make no sense out of this conversation. No. But go ahead and read, brother. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Oh, that's that sleep is on you. Go ahead. And hath closed your eyes. Uh-huh. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. All your spiritual leaders and your political leaders and everybody, he done closed their eyes. So why do you keep running to them and trying to find out what the Lord said? When their eyes is closed. You go to a blind man and say, man, where is Johnson Street at? And he can't see. Why do you keep asking? And the same thing with these false prophets. Ain't nothing wrong with the blind, but I'm just saying, get your information from a true source. From the Lord, from the word of God. But now, he said, he done poured the spirit of sleep on their rulers. 11 verses where you at? And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Oh, that's how the vision came, like a words of a book that is sealed. But who can open up the seals, people? Jesus. Go ahead and read. Which, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, uh -huh. read this, I pray thee. What did he say? And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Ain't that some? Because the Lord got to open the seals up. There's a cat that's learned, that's been in school, theologian, that's been graduating and everything. And you know what? He said, I can't open the book because it's sealed. That's heavy, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You spent all that college money at this theologian school and you can't open the book? Go ahead and read. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, uh -huh. read this, I pray thee. Go ahead. And he said, I am not learned. He said, this is a country dude on the couch. Man, I'm with the Lord. He did one third of the evening and made him a preacher. But he couldn't open the book because it was sealed. Go ahead and read. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, mm. and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Go ahead. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Oh, my God. This is what we got every Sunday morning. The precepts of men have taken you away from the commandments of God. So if you get taken away from the commandments of God, are you going to get to the kingdom? Yeah. So this is why the world is set up to keep you away. This is Satan pushing this agenda because he know he's going to the lake of fire and he want to take everybody he can to go with it. That's why misery loves company. Well, I thought I was, uh, that extra thing came me for a minute. Here. But now, 
Let's get back to the business at hand. He said, but look here now. These people, they draw near me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but they have removed their mind far from me. This is what Jesus told Isaiah, but then he quoted it again. Let's go to Matthew 15 and take another look at it. That's why we got to come out of the law and the testimony, people. Because the prophets are saying the same thing the apostles are saying, and ain't no different. They quote what the prophets have already spoken because mm -hmm. the Lord said the Lord God would do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Matthew 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 15 and 1. What did it say, my brother? Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Uh huh. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Go ahead. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. See, they're always dealing with the tradition. This is the commandments of me that will take you away from the commandments of God. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? That's right. You, you know, I said, look here. Why are you keeping Christmas and Easter and all this here breaking the commandment of God by your tradition? Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. Uh huh. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Go ahead. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Uh huh. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That's right, because they're telling you that if you, your parents ain't got old now, and they need some taken care of. And you taking care of them, you're doing the right thing, but you don't honor them no more. I don't have to listen to what you say, Daddy and Mama, no more. Because I'm taking care of you. I'm giving you the gift now. The Lord said, no, no. In the commandments, it said, honor your mother and father. That's the first commandment with promise. That your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honor your mother and your father. And the book tell you in the law, don't forsake your parents in their old age. See, we quick to put them up in their home. and When Mama, she'll be out. They ain't even changing her sheets or nothing like that. She's laying in all kind of stuff all week long. And ain't none of her children that came out there to see him one time. How you honoring your mother and your father? He didn't say if they, no matter what they doing, you still honor. Because that's what he told you to do. But now, he said, but well, what do they do? Now, what verse we have, Jeff? Middle six. Go ahead and read. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by uh -huh. your tradition. Go ahead. Ye hypocrites. Mm. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying. What did Isaiah say? This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths uh. and honors me with their lips. Go ahead. But their heart is far from me. And you know the book ain't lying. You see people on the street. That's all they talking about. Oh, I'm blessed. God the Lord. Have mercy G. And you ask them one question. They can't answer that. Because their heart is far from them. They honor him with their mouth. But they don't even know when the Sabbath day is. Man. And I ain't coming down on the people. It's these false prophets and that false doctrine. That's what's hurting the people, man. Anyway, you're in a church for 30 something years. You don't know when the Sabbath day is. You are in the wrong place. What verse for Jeff? Verse 9. What does it say? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And Jesus quoted what he told Isaiah. Watch out. That's why he told in Matthew 24. Take heed that no man deceive. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. But now, let's go back to Revelation, the sixth chapter. Because we're trying to get down to these seals, people. Y'all with me so far? We getting some understanding? Then praise the Lord in Jesus' name, because all good things come from above. But now, Revelation 6, we're going to read 1 and 2. Now, look here. In uh, chapter 5, they was crying because couldn't nobody was found worthy to open the seals. Am I right? But now Jesus finna start opening one of the seals. This is when you got to put your thinking caps on now because this is when the water's finna get deep. Are you ready? Let's do it. Verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Uh huh. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. Go ahead. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Now he opened up the first seal. Let's see what he saw up under the first seal. Go ahead and read. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Uh huh. And he that sat on him had a bow 
and a crown was given unto him. Uh huh. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Who is it? No. You know who this is, people? That's why I told you to watch this. This is the Pope of Rome. This is the man of sin. This is the abomination that make it desolate. I want you to know that because when the seals get opened, the first seal you see, who do you see? The Pope of Rome. He got on a crown. He riding on a white horse because he told you I'm going to be just like the Mosai, didn't he? But he got one crown on Jesus' head. It's many crowns. That's how you make the separation. And he's going for a conquering in the country. He's going to get you to take that mark of the beast. If you don't take it, you're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you got the mark. Ain't that something? You're going to have $14 million, but you can't buy a hot dog if you don't got to take that mark in your right hand and your forehead. Ain't that something? But this is what the book said. But now he said he going for a conquering in the country. Ain't that what he said? Yeah. Let's go see who this man is that's going for a conquering and a conquer. Let's go to Second uh, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. I got to be cool. Now. I'm getting too excited. I got to slow down. But Dale got me all messed up reading that word. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Let's see who this man was that had that right crowd and riding on that boat. Two, second Thessalonians, two and one. Let me see. I don't hear no pages. Everybody's with me. Let me, I still hear some pages. I'm waiting on you. We're going to read this together. It might be a long time before we get out here, but you'll call it out tell boo, don't never let Ray come back down here. I don't care. I'll, we'll come up there before we <laughs> no, that, that boy. Second Thessalonians, second chapter and verse one. What did it say? Now we beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. That's what we're all about. We're looking for the gathering and the coming of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, uh -huh. or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, uh -huh. as that the day of Christ is at hand. That's right. The Lord said, don't let no spirit whisper in your ear. Don't let nobody send you no letter. Don't let nobody tell no, no word that the that Christ could come tomorrow. Christ cannot come tomorrow because we're seeing that certain things must take place before Christ comes. He can't come tomorrow. He'll break the scripture. He ain't going to do that. But go ahead and read. What did he tell you to watch out for? Third verse. Let no man deceive you by any means. Uh huh. For that day shall not come except there come a fall in the way first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What? He told you the same thing Jesus said. Don't let no man deceive you. Don't sit at home at 12 o'clock at night looking at these false prophets. I'm going to send me a thousand dollars. I promise you. When you wake up the next morning, there's two thousand be on the table. Come on, people. Don't listen to that, Father. This is what the Word of God say. But he said, don't let no man deceive you. But he said something else. He said, except, he said, for that day shall not come except that couple falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. Look here, people, let me tell you something. If we have another falling away, would nobody be in the kingdom? Look around and see how many people know about the word of God. It feels like you walk around with a big secret. And you want to tell everybody, but as soon as you open your mouth, they want to pull a gun on you and shoot you. Ain't that something? But he said, look here. It's going to come a falling away and the man of sin. Not only is they call this the abomination that makes it's the man of sin, the son of perdition, the son of destruction. And who is it? The one that's coming out of Rome. That's saying peace, peace to everybody. That's going to leave Rome and set his throne up in Jerusalem. And they call it the abomination that, that make it desolate. But let's see why they call it that. Keep reading. Who opposes it? And exalted himself above all that is called God, uh -huh. or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And I tell you, people, if that ain't no abomination, what is it? A man sitting in the temple of God, exalting himself above all that is God, and calling himself God? Mm. If that ain't no abomination, what is it? This and desolation is what? Why? Spread destruction. Come about the book called this the man of sin. See, everybody looking at the holy man. It's supposed to be the most holiest man on the planet. But what did the book call him? The man of sin. 
He's calling himself the Holy Father. What you think they call him? Pope? What Pope means? Papa. You the Father. The Lord told you in Matthew 13, call no man upon the earth your father. For one, your father's in heaven. That's why you say our father is where? Which I in and call no man master. For one is your master, even Christ. Ain't that something? But this man, and what is he going to do? This is that man you seen on that white horse when Jesus opened up that first seal. So that first seal is what? The start of great tribulation. Are you with me? Go ahead and read. Five. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Uh-huh. And now ye know what was holding, that he might be revealed in this time. When is he going to be revealed when he leave Rome and set his strong up in Jerusalem? But he revealed to the servants of God right now. We're looking right at it because of the word. But go ahead and read. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. You mean it was working in Paul day? Go ahead. Only he who now let it will let. That's right. Until he be taken out of the way. So the Lord is letting it be so because the Lord made us a free agent. We gonna, he going to see if you're going to follow him or you're going to follow the Lord. But it's going to be your choice. So he said, this day I said life and death, good and evil before you. Choose life and live that thou and thy seed may live. So be careful with your choice because it's more than for you. It's for your children too. But now, 8 verse, what did he say? And then shall that wicked be revealed, uh -huh. whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now look at this 8 verse close now. If the Lord is going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming, how long is great tribulation, people? Huh? The Lord comes. How long is great tribulation? So now if the Lord is going to take him out with the brightness of his coming, when the abomination that make him desolate stand up, which is the Pope, three and a half years later, who are you going to be looking at? Because the Lord is the one going to take him out. Do you see how close this thing is, people? That's why you have to look at the scriptures with some understanding. But now, what else he say about this guy? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonder. So where is he getting his power from, people? Satan the devil. Satan the devil. And is he going to be working miracles? He gonna, we ain't going to read it, but you write it down. Revelation 13, chapter, how he go... Uh, Make a statue walk and talk. He's going to make fire come down in heaven in the sight of men. And when you see that, if you don't know God, you're going to say, that man is God. Because can't no other man do that. But if you've been reading the book, you're going to be saying, I was waiting when he was going to do that. Because you got that understanding. You hear what I'm saying? But now, you read that ninth verse for jail? Yeah. But now, you know we get this power from Satan. Now, let's go back to Revelation 6. We know who this is and read that again. We've seen the abomination that make of death. So let's go back and look at it one more time. Revelation 6, and this time we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Revelation 6 and 3. And when you get it for jail, go ahead and read it. Y'all still with me? All right, let's go. Okay, go ahead. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard this, the second beast say, come and see. So now the white horse brought on the condition of the red horse. But who's the white horse? The Pope, the Antichrist. And he brought the condition of the, 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 the red horse. Read that second verse. Take me from the top of jail, because I'm losing my way. Verse 2. 6 and 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, uh -huh. and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. What did he see? And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, uh -huh. and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Who is this? Go ahead and read. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. Go ahead. And there went out another horse that was red, uh -huh. and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. How do you take peace from the earth? Go ahead. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So he going forth to conquer and to conquer. He going killing big time, people. So the white horse brought on the condition of the red horse, which is war. 
But remember, we're looking at a time like it never was before, and it never shall be again. This is the start of great tribulation. Are you with me? Go ahead and read. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third be say, come and see. Uh -huh. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Uh -huh. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four be say, a measure of wheat for a penny, uh -huh. and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Ain't this some sort of white horse, which is the Antichrist, brought on condition of the red horse, which is war, which brought on condition of the black horse, which is famine. It's a controlled famine because you ain't going to be able to buy or sell unless you got that mark of the beast. You notice that everything that we buy, the barcode is on it. And in that barcode is that number, 666. But it don't mean nothing on the bottle is letting us know that mark is coming. But what do it mean something? When that mark is on your forehead and your right hand. And that boy is sitting over there in Jerusalem. I'm talking about he is God. The abomination that make him desolate. The man of sin. So when he opened up the first seal, Jesus showing you the Antichrist. This is the start of great tribulation. Go ahead and read. And when he had opened the fourth seal, uh -huh. I heard the voice. I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, "Come and see." Uh huh. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. Go ahead. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. He's going to have control over the fourth part of the earth because he's just going out to Congress, and that's a little area he's taking place, but we're going to see later on in this lesson, this thing is going to have, going to try the whole world on everybody that dwell upon the earth. Ain't that something? That's bigger than a fourth part, ain't it? But go ahead and read. To kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Uh-huh. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God uh. and for the testimony which they held. See, some people are going to escape this great tribulation. They're going to flee to the place of safety, which is the wilderness, not the rapture. And some is going to have to go to it and be killed. But if you die in the name of the Lord, guess what? It's an automatic ticket to the kingdom. Automatic ticket. And you know you three and a half years in the great tribulation, hey, he might be dead for a year. Then the Lord wake him right back up because he's going to be at the end of that to take this man down. Ain't that what we read? Yeah. What verse we at? Verse 10. Go ahead. What happened to him that got killed? And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, uh -huh. holy and true, does thou not judge, judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Uh -huh. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. That's right. He said, let's stay down a little bit longer. I'm going to raise y'all all up in a few. But he said white robes were given to every one of them. See, that white robe people ain't for you to put on and walk around in the park and, and show somebody you serving God. That, you get that white robe when you go when you made it in God's kingdom. Not walking around here in the park. Hey, just because you got a white robe, what you mean? I done seen the cat had all white on me sticking people up. But the thing is, though, the right robe represents the righteous of the saints. But what verse are you at for Jesus? We get down to it. Now put your finger caps on. What verse we at? Verse 12. Go ahead and read. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Pay attention now. What happened up under the sixth seal? Go ahead. And lo, there was a great earthquake. What? And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You know what? We just ran up on that eclipse. We done ran up on the eclipse, and we didn't even have to catch no plane. Where is it at? Right here. In the sixth seal. What's going to happen? This let you know that great tribulation is over for the saints. An entire period known as the day of the Lord is getting ready to begin. That's that sign that they was looking at. Means of people out there, it wasn't one preacher to let them know, hey, that's a sign of the day of the Lord when he's getting ready to pour out his wrath on this earth. You see what I'm saying? You see how heavy this deception is? I mean, you out there taking selfies and everything. Get me, get me right here, man. Hey, 
you're looking at the deadliest thing that's going to take place on the earth, and you don't even know it. You don't even realize it. Go ahead and read, brother. What did it say? And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. But start at 12, because we're going to see up what happened up under the sixth seal. Start at 12 again. Go ahead and read. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Uh-huh. And lo, there was a great earthquake. See, that's the only thing he didn't let happen. It's going to be a great earthquake. Go ahead and read. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Uh-huh. And the moon became as blood. What they call an eclipse. But that's a sign of the day of the Lord. It's getting ready to begin. Go ahead. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, uh -huh. even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Ain't that something? The stars gonna fall. Sun turned black. Moon turned to blood. Go ahead and read. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Uh huh. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Boy, when that six seal go down, you gonna know. You mean to tell me you have to tell somebody that's got to tell you you under the seals? If you don't know this, you can't see this. I'm going to tell you how you're going to know. Go ahead and read. Keep reading. And the kings of the earth and the great men uh -huh. and the rich men and the chief captain and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Boy, you know you showed up wicked. You want a, a mountain and rock to fall on you because you're trying to hide because you see that this thing is for real. It wasn't no fairy tale. The heaven that rolled back, you're looking right at the Jesus on the right hand of the Father. The stars unfed, the moon unturned the blood, and what's really, you're looking at the Lord himself. Boy, and you know what? Guess what? It's right up the road, people. This thing is near. Read. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Yes, sir. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Nothing but those that serve in the Lord. That's who's going to be able to stand. Now, let's go to Revelation 12 right quick, because the Lord told you he got a place prepared that you can go and flee to where you don't have to even deal with this great tribulation. Only with your eyes you're going to see it. Let's see where is that. Let's see, is it the rapture? Or is it somewhere else the Lord has got designated for you to hide? Revelation 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse. We're going to read verse 6. We're going to get right down to it. Revelation 12 and 6. What did he say now? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand Two hundred and three score days. How long is a thousand two hundred and three score days? Yeah, it's the time of great tribulation. This is the time like it never was before and never shall be again. This is what kicked off that first seal when the white horse turned on to the red horse, which turned to the black horse, which was the bell horse, which is death and hell. But when did it happen? In three and a half years. This is why it's a time like it never was before because the the Antichrist is pouring out his wrath, and then also the Lord is going to pour out his wrath in the last six months. That's a terrible three and a half years. You hear what I'm saying? But now, go ahead and read some more. And there was war in heaven. That's far enough. Skip down to verse 14. He said that woman going to flee to the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. 14th verse, what did he say? And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle uh -huh. that she might fly into the wilderness. Go ahead. Into her place where she is nourished for a time. Time is one year. And time. Time is two years plus and, one is three. And half a time. Three and a half years. Go ahead. From the face of the serpent. Ain't that something? So you'll be here. Other scriptures tell you. We, I don't know if we have time to keep to them today, but they'll let you know only with your eyes shall we behold the reward of the wicked. 10,000 shall fall at your side, 1,000 at your right hand, but it should not come near you because you in the Lord's place of safety. In the place, that's the only place he promised you protection there. But 15 verse, keep on reading now. What did he say? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Uh-huh. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That's right. So when you see that abomination, that make a difference and see everybody flee to that place of safety, Satan going to cast an army out after the woman to try to stop her. But he ain't going to be able to get her because the Lord is dealing with this thing. But go ahead and read. And the earth helped the woman. Oh, the earth going to help the woman. Go ahead. 
and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Uh huh. And the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Ain't that some? So some people fled. They had the faith to do it, but some people faith wasn't strong enough. They couldn't walk away and lead them two Cadillacs in the driveway in that big house. Is I can't lead and say, go in the wilderness. No, I think we stay here. We can make it, baby. Don't let them fool you. Because remember now, this is a time of trouble. And, and sisters, don't let them brothers fool you. Don't, don't let me be one-sided with this thing. Hey, remember, this is a time like it never was before and it never shall be again. And the Lord said, look here, the woman fled to the wilderness. So he couldn't get the woman. He calls a flood after the woman. What's his flood? An army. Just like uh, Pharaoh. Israel was leading out of Egypt. What the Satan cast out of his mouth then? A flood after the woman. Who was it with Pharaoh and his army? This time it's going to be the Pope and his army. But they ain't going to get the woman. So they're going to come back and get the woman that didn't run. She stayed behind. Ain't that something? Yeah. For whatever reason. And now you're going to stay behind in a time like it never was before and it never shall be again. Which one would you rather be in? The place of safety or the time like it never was before and it never shall be again? That's why it's time to clean your house up and show God now I'm ready to roll. I don't want to be here when that trouble comes. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Revelation 13, right into 13. And verse 1, what did it say, brother? And I stood upon the sand of the sea uh -huh. and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now this beast here, who is this beast? Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns, uh -huh. and upon his horns ten crowns, mm -hmm. and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Yes, sir, because this is the Gentile dynasty, son. From Nebuchadnezzar all the way down to Rome. But go ahead and read now. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. Which represented the Greek Empire. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Which represent Russia and all the allies. Even now they got that big bear. Go ahead and read. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh -huh. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Did we read in Thessalonians that Satan the devil gave this guy his power? This is the same one. So Satan, high priest, is the man of sin. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. Uh-huh. And all the world wondered after the beast. Look at that, people. How many people wondered after the beast? All the world. Oh, he they always say that already deceived the whole world. But he said they deadly wound is healed. Rome was wounded in 476 A.D. This is when she came down from being a world ruler. But ever since then, she was going to rise and fall ten times. And there was always somebody trying to bring her back to her status. But this one is going to do it this day. The man of sin. That's why he said the deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. The beast is the organization. And the Pope is the one that's riding the beast. Even in Brussels, Belgium is the headquarters where they got that, that horse there and got that woman riding that beast. Representing the Catholic Church. Ain't that something? And over the 10 European common markets, which right over there in Western Europe right now, people. The stage is set. But we ain't paying no attention because we too busy in the church sanctifying and joking it. We ain't reading no book. You know what I'm saying? But now, what verse you at? Verse 4. Go ahead and read. And they worshiped the dragon, uh -huh. which gave power unto the beast. Go ahead. And they worshiped the beast, saying, uh -huh. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Go ahead. And there was and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Yes, sir. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. How long is 42 months, people? Three and a half years. This is that same time. This is when you wanted to see when that great tribulation started. The first seal we seen was the Antichrist. But go ahead and read. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Yes, he did. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. That's right. You're calling yourself the Holy Father or even the Pontificus Maximus. That means the supreme 
world ruler, the replacement of Christ. Even on the crown, he got the name for Carius Philly Die. And if you add it up in Roman numerals, it'll come out to 666. How much evidence do you need? Go ahead and read. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Oh, come on, saints. Come on, saints. And to overcome them. Uh-huh. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. That's right. You call yourself a saint? Well, that boy's going to make war against you. He's going to try to overcome you. That's why you got to, when you see, that's why he told you. Now you start to see, if you're on the housetop, don't come down to take anything out of your house. If you're in the field, don't return back to take your clothes because it's going to be a time of urgency when you've got to get out of here. If you don't, you're going to be caught in great tribulation, a time like it never was before and it never shall be again since it was a creation. Think about it, people. What verse you at? Verse 8. Go ahead and read. And all that dwell upon earth shall worship him. How many people that dwell on the earth? All. Oh. Go ahead. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. All the world on look at that on TV when they Catholic is having something. Look how many people be out there, people. That's just in, in Italy, in Vatican City. But it is the biggest organization on the face of the earth, people. But the Lord said, look out for those that's coming in the name of Christ. Skip down to verse 13 and continue. What did it say? And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of me. Now you ask somebody, hey man, what have you seen uh, that the Pope rain fire down from heaven in the sight of Would you think he was God? They'll tell you, yeah. I did it before. Yeah. I said, why? Because can't no other man do it. But they don't know the book that I already told. Go ahead and read. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth uh -huh. that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now the image of the beast, they're going to have a statue and the Pope is going to make it walk and talk. It ain't going to be no computer. people. You know, I was watching the Ghostbusters the first time. And they sprayed some foam on that Statue of Liberty. And the statue came alive and started walking up out of the water. And when I seen that, I almost passed out. Because it put me in the mind, this how this guy's going to give life to a piece of rock and cause it to walk and talk. Read that verse again, but pay attention to what you read. Go ahead. And deceive it them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Uh -huh. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Go ahead. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, uh -huh. that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Ain't that so? Kill everybody who ain't got the mark. And that, that statue going to do it. Because remember, he getting his power from who? Satan the devil. Go ahead and read now. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And what is that number? Yes, it is, but let's just read it to make sure we Here, know what we're talking about. Go ahead, 18th verse. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Uh huh. For it is the number of a man. Go ahead. And his number is six hundred three score and six. And you know something? If you go back to Daniel and see when they Nebuchadnezzar had set this statue up, he said, "When you hear the sound of six instruments, and the thing was sixty feet wide and six feet tall, when you hear it, what is that? Six six. This is how it started out, people." Mm -hmm. And this is how the Gentile kingdom is going to end up. But the thing is, the Lord is laying this out. All of these are the signs that we got to look for. This is why we don't want to get caught up under them seals. But now, let's go further now. Let's go to Isaiah, the 24th chapter. Here's another scripture you can get to and see that end time. Isaiah 24. Y'all still with me? Y'all done got quiet now. I'm just looking out there. Is anybody out there? But hey, look at people. I know this thing shake here. It shake me up too. I'm scared too. I'm letting you know. I'm shook up. 
Sometimes I be at home reading this stuff while I close the book. I go to bed. I said, I, I talk to y'all tomorrow. But now, but you got to deal with it, people. You got to deal with it. Hey, hey, the ones that love you going to tell you the truth. The ones that don't going to lie to you. It ain't hard to figure it out. Isaiah 24 and verse 1, what did it say, bro? No, it's like 24, 17. What did it say? Fear and the pit and the snare are upon the O inhabitant of the earth. That's what great tribulation is going to be. What they call it? Fear, the pit, and the snare. Why? And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall be shall fall into the pit. Go ahead. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. Why? For the windows from on high are open. Uh-huh. And the foundations of the earth do shake. Didn't he say he's going to uh, have a great earthquake? This thing is going to be so, earthquake going to be so strong. Let me show you how it's going to be. Let's keep reading. Go ahead. The earth is utterly broken down. Uh-huh. The earth is clean dissolved. Uh-huh. The earth is uh -huh. moved exceedingly. What happened? The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunk. Go ahead. And shall be removed like a cottage. Ain't this up? The Lord will have an earthquake so hard, the earth is going to reel back and forth like a drunkard. Have you ever seen a drunk walking down the street? That's the way the earth going to do. Ain't that some? Go ahead and read. And the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it. Why? What's, why the Lord doing it? Because the transgression is going to be heavy upon it. What is transgression, people? Sin. And the Lord said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Go ahead and read. And it shall fall and not rise again. Yes, sir. What where, where you at? Verse 21. 21. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. Also, oh, all those rich folks that think they're going to escape. Your money is not going to save you. Go ahead and read. And the kings of the earth upon the earth. Uh-huh. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And that pit he's talking about is that grave. And you're going to be there until he raise you up for the judgment. But skip down to 23. How do we know what time we is? The Lord always leave you a signature. What is it? Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. Ain't that an eclipse? And that when they were taking pictures of the other day, it's all over the book. Ain't nobody looking at it. Go ahead and read. When the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion. Uh-huh. And in Jerusalem and before his ancients glorious. And why is he going to be before his ancients? Because all of the servants all the way back to Adam coming up in that first resurrection. And they're going to be right there to, with the Lord. And we'll be right there with him if we be blessed. He's going to reign over the ancient. Ain't that something? This Bible is telling me all I need to know. But let's see, how can we escape this thing? Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. I mean, he got everything in here? Yes, he do. Why do I know it? Because you ain't been reading. It ain't hard. You know you ain't been reading. A woman told me one time she was reading. I said, yeah. I said, what's the first book of the Bible? She didn't even know it. I said, girl, get your book. Get your book. Let me show you something. You done went crazy. But ain't no need to lie. If you ain't been reading, come clean. I ain't been reading. I remember brother got me, brother Zah. He got me. Every time I see him, I knew he had that Bible. I started running. Oh, that old boy. I, I shoot another way. I wasn't ready for it, you know. And where I cut, though, that boy found me. He'll be right there. Hey, brother, you, you been reading your Bible? I tell him, no, I ain't been reading. Ain't no need to be lying. <laughs> I ain't read. I ain't got a Bible, bro. I'm gonna tell you that. But hey, but I thank God for that, brother, because he stayed with me, you know. But now let's see. Let's see how we can stay this thing. Let's go to Revelation 3, and we're going to read 7 and 8. And we're going to do a little skipping. We're going to skip to the 10 and 11. We're going to read 7 and 8, the third chapter of Revelation. Okay, brother, go ahead. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, uh -huh. these things says he that is holy. He that is true, he that has the key of David, uh -huh. he that openeth and no man shutteth. Yes, sir. And shutteth and no man openeth. He's talking about this word. He can shut it and can't no man open it. And he can open it and can't no man shut it. But right now we've seen the Lord and open up these seals. Joel said he's going to pour his 
spirit out on his sons and his daughters in the last day. Your young men going to prophesy. Your old men going to dream dreams and see visions. Upon my servants and on my handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. But what else is he going to do? Eighth verse. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Go ahead. And no man can shut it. Uh -huh. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. It ain't going to take no lot to get out of here or to be to the place of safety. He said you got a little, what did that say? You got a little strength. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. And if you do that, what are he going to do to you? Go ahead. Behold. Skip down to verse 10 and continue. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, uh -huh. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Wait a minute. What is the hour of temptation? Tribulation. It's great tribulation, people. The hour of temptation. It's called the hour of temptation. Great tribulation, the seven seals of God, a time like it never was before and it never shall be again. But we're talking about the same time, time like it never was before and it never shall be again. Read, Brother Fajel. Which shall come upon all the world. How many people is coming up on? All the world. Go ahead. To try them that dwell upon the earth. And the Lord is sending us a message in this 11th verse. What did he say? Behold. I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Ain't that something? He said, I come quickly. Y'all, I'm coming 20 years from now. Is that quickly? He said, I'm coming quickly. We can't put no time on it, but we do what? We watch and look at the signs, and they will not mislead you. But now, he said, you got a little strength. You have not denied my name. Therefore, I'm going to keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. But now let's go to Luke 21. Luke 21. Boy, this great tribulation is something. This, these seals, man. And you know what? You'll never hear this kind of teaching taught in the church. One of the biggest things that's coming up on this earth, you'll never hear it mentioned not one time in the churches. Maybe I am in the wrong place. Maybe I need to get on down to that Israel of God. Right. Yes, sir. But now, Luke 21 and 33. Luke 21 and 33. Luke 21 and 33. Because this is one thing we let you know. Okay. Go ahead. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That's pretty clear. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but my word ain't going to pass away. Go ahead and read. And take heed to yourselves. Let's set any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting uh -huh. and, and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unaware. That's right. See, if you get to slack and you ain't reading, you ain't paying no attention, that day going to come upon you in unaware. Like it's going to do a lot of people. Go ahead and read. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Who is going to come upon people? Nobody's going to be able to escape this thing. But what the Lord tell us to do, 36th verse now. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He said pray always that you be able to escape these things because this is that hour of temptation. But let's go look at it again. Let's see how the Lord is warning you of this thing. Let's go to Matthew, Matthew the uh, sixth chapter. Lord is he warning you about this all over the book. And ain't nobody paying no attention. It's everywhere. Surely we should understand these things. Matthew 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9 now. Because the Lord is telling you how to pray here. Let's see how he told you to pray. Matthew 6 and 9. Matthew 6 and 9. Okay, when you get it, go ahead and read. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. Yes, sir. Hallowed be thy name. Uh-huh. Thy kingdom come. Go ahead. Thy will be done in earth. Uh-huh. As it is in heaven. Go ahead. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh-huh. And forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. That's right, because you said, Lord, if I don't forgive my brother, don't you forgive me of my debts. Go ahead and read. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Wait a minute. Lead us not into temptation? What temptation is this talking about, Pete? This is talking about the hour of temptation that's going to come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the face of the earth. What's one hour to the Lord? Three and a half years. What's one day to the Lord? A thousand years. Ain't that something? So if three and a half years is one hour, and you're about 40 or 50 or 60 years old, you ain't been on the scene too long, have you? <laughs> Not long enough to be making no decisions and talking about the word of God ain't no good. But now, he said this was one hour. You saying every time you sin in your prayer, you saying, Lord, don't lead me into great tribulation. That's what you, you, you don't even know you pray. You think it's everyday temptation. Some girl walking. No, don't bring that girl past me. Don't bring that handsome man past me. I don't want to look at him. Then what you looking for? Up here? Now, let's go to Revelation 18 then. Revelation 18 and 9. And flesh be trying to fool you. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't looking, baby. I know you wouldn't. Uh, Revelation 18 and 9 and 10. Because we got to get. We're looking for this hour of temptation. Revelation 18, 9 and 10. What did it say, bro? And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication uh -huh. and live deliciously with her shall bewail her yes, sir. And, and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Ain't this something? Go ahead. Standing afar off from the fear of her torment, saying, uh -huh. Alas, alas. That great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. One hour. What hour is this, people? The hour of temptation, which is great tribulation, which is going to come upon all the world like it never was before. Time like it never shall be again. How many times can we have that, people? One time. And we ain't up under the seals yet because you see when the seals get here, it's going to get everybody's attention. He said the mighty man is going to cry there bitterly. The guy that's real tough, that can knock 10 dudes out with the left hand, he's going to be hollering like a little baby. Lord, don't kill me. Because he's going to be so afraid and so scared. Because the Lord said he's going to drop, he's going to lap the bow with terror. See, we don't know about the terror of the Lord, people. It's something else. It is something else. But we're going to see it, though. Don't worry about it. You're going to get a front row seat. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go back to Matthew 24 now. Back to Matthew 24. I told you to keep a mark in there because we're going to be in and out. Matthew 24 now, and we're going to just read from verse 22 to 31. 22 to 31. You with me, for Jeff? Yeah. Let me see, I still hear some pages. I'm waiting on. We're waiting. We're doing this as a family. We're having a family talk about the end time, people. We ain't condemning nobody. We ain't judging nobody. We're just trying to let you know what the Lord says so you can deliver your own soul. Let each soul work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, Matthew 24 and 22, what did it say now? And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. Go ahead. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Go ahead. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Because soon as you see that abomination that make up dusting, what the people going to be saying? Christ is back in Jerusalem. Christ is over there. You know, if they get together millions to go see the eclipse, what you think they're going to do if they say Christ is sitting back over there in Jerusalem? But it's going to be the man of sin. Go ahead and read. For there shall arise false Christ. Yes. And false prophets. Uh huh. And shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So that's why the Lord was warning you, let no man deceive you, because the deception is going to be so strong, they would deceive the very elect people. You standing next to a man that can bring fire down from heaven, making a statue walk and talk. You better know your God real good. Oh, that's deception going. That's witchcraft going to suck you up like a slurpy from McDonald's. 
But keep on reading, brother. <laughs> Behold, I have told you before. Uh -huh. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go ahead. Go not forth. Uh -huh. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. See, the secret chambers represent the temple. He said, don't believe. They say over the desert, don't go. They say he's there in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Go ahead and read. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's right. So like you see that lightning shine from the east or the west, you're going to see the Son of Man when he comes, people. Remember, the heavens are going to be the roll back like a scroll. The stars are going to be the Every mountain and island moved out of their places. But that's under the sixth seal. But when is the Lord coming? At what trumpet? The seventh trumpet. So it's a lot of stuff that's going to go down before the Lord can come. He ain't coming here. He let you see him. But what? when is he coming? Read that 28th verse and walk into it. Go ahead. For whatsoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. That's right, because the Lord going to cause the birds. He said, I've seen the angels standing in the sun, calling all the fowls of heaven to come and gather yourselves together of the supper of the great, great God, God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses. I mean, they, this is going to be a big feast because the Lord be done, done so much killing. He said the horse, the uh, blood is going to come to the horse's bridle for 200 miles. That's just in Jerusalem. Go ahead and read now. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened. What? And the moon shall not give her light. Well, it's going to be after the tribulation. That's when the Lord is coming. That's when you're going to see that east cliff. But what is it showing you? That great tribulation is over for the saints, and the entire period known as the day of the Lord is getting ready to begin. Read that again one more time, brother. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven, uh -huh. and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, uh -huh. and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There go that trumpet. And when is Israel going to be gathered? Seven Keep reading. They, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. But when? When that great trumpet sound. If you got seven trumpets, what is the greatest sound they want? The seven. And that's when Israel is going to be uh, gathered. When I say Israel, I'm talking about the natural seed and everybody that's joined along to the commonwealth of Israel. Because remember, God's house is going to be called a house of prayer for all people. All people. Remember, he told you way back in the days of Abraham that through Abraham's seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. It's just that simple. And it has not changed to this day. But now, let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Let's go to Acts. We're coming down now. We're coming down. I'm trying to see. Can y'all hang out? Y'all look here. The sun is so beautiful. Let's go outside and just sit in the sun. Just get just, just sit out there. Y'all want to finish this? Okay, all right. Praise the Lord. We come down here with a message from the Lord. And it's his word. It's, it's his word. Nobody ain't got nothing to do with it. It's God's word. And we having a family talk and we trying to find out what to do. In the end time. Acts 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Let's see what the Lord told Peter in this Acts 2 and 14. Okay. Because, you know, they had been coming there on the day of Pentecost now. And every man heard them speak in the tongue where they was born. And wasn't nothing but Israelites there from Galilee. How are they speaking all these different languages? And Peter said, ain't nothing but the third hour of the day. I mean, I could have got drunk a whole lot of people, but I ain't never been able to speak no language. I'd be talking crazy, but it ain't, it ain't no language. I, but <laughs> now, to jail, he's a, now, go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Go ahead and read, bro. That's 2 and 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, 
uh -huh. lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, uh -huh. and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, Go ahead. be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. Uh -huh. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. That's right. Peter said, These men ain't drunk. But what is this, Peter, we looking at? Go ahead and read. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Uh -huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes, sir. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. People, he's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. He's pouring his spirit up. Go ahead and read. And on, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. That's right. And they shall prophesy. See, there ain't nothing wrong with a woman prophesying. Hey, you out there tomorrow, you out there somewhere, there's children. Some of your relatives, oh, you crack that book and hit them upside the head with it. Because you love them and you want them to know. But it's not for a woman's job to be up at the roster. That's not a place of like it ain't my job to be in the mercy room in the maternity ward having a baby. That's not my job. If I'm in there, something done went wrong. But the same way here, the Lord wants his daughters to preach, but just don't try to run the camp. It's just that simple. And I tell sisters all the time, the Lord gave you a great job. You don't got to be no man. You know the job the Lord gave you. He made you to be the example of the church of God. This is supposed to be a woman I can come to and get nourished, get fed, can raise up my children, teach them the word of God, and I can put my whole trust in her because she is my girl. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The best job. You got it. But now, what else is we going to see in the last days, 19th verse? Go ahead and read. And I will show wonders in heaven above uh -huh. and signs in earth beneath. Go ahead. Blood and fire and uh -huh. vapor of smoke. And what's going to happen? The sun shall be turned into darkness. What? And the moon into blood. Go ahead. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. So what does that eclipse represent, people? How many times are we going to see it before we understand it? Hey, could nobody stand up and say, look here, man, that is a sign when the Lord is great, tripling his nation is over, and the Lord's going to pour out his wrath on this earth. That's what it's for. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so amazing. We'll never see it again. You're going to see it again, and when you see it, you ain't going to be taking no pictures this time. I guarantee you. But now, let's go quickly. He said Joel spoke about this thing. Joel spoke about it. Let's go to Joel and see what he said now. Let's go look at Joel. So I know some of y'all feel bad, man. I wish I could have caught the plane and went down there and sang that thing. Don't feel bad. It bothers me. I was like, boy, it's throwing away money. You're throwing away money. Joel 2 and 28 now. He said, this is what the prophet Joel, because see the prophets and the apostles, they agree in one. They're saying the same thing. Joel 2 and 28. I hope y'all been writing down these scriptures. I just hope you have. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh-huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Go ahead. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh-huh. Your young men shall see visions. Go ahead. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Yes, sir. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Uh-huh. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Go ahead. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Ain't that something? You see how this thing is all over the book with what nobody able to recognize it? This is bad, people. This is how you know the preachers ain't teaching the word of God. Like I said, we ain't coming down on the people. We coming down on that false doctrine. That's what's killing the people. The people looking for God, that's why they in church. And then we, I call it a double whammy. You say, I'm going to leave the streets. I ain't fooling around. I'm going to be straight. Then you run to the church, and guess who you run into? The devil again. That's a double whammy, man. 
That's a hard pill to swallow. Then you say, skip this church thing. I'm going to go on my own. Oh, everybody's faking. Now you done created a crazy monster. They ain't no telling what he lied to do. But this thing is messed up, people. But we see it's all over the book. But now let's go further. Now let's go back to Matthew 24. Y'all with me? Look here, I got about five more scriptures. Can we make it? I'm talking about for real. All right, all right. I see y'all getting weary. I see the sister over there going to sleep on me. <laughs> Come on, Ray. Hurry up, get in there. But let's go. Matthew 24 now. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Get a little summary of these things. But people, we're trying to lock it in your mind so you'll know and be able to pass it on. Matthew 24 and verse 3. What did he say now? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Go ahead. Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That was a good question. And this is what we wanted to know. And he tell us, what's the first sign, Pajel? And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. That's the first thing on the agenda. You got to do some reading yourself, people. You got to get on and burn that kind of light. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh -huh. and shall deceive many. So watch out for those that's coming in the name of Christ. Don't worry about the Muslims and the Buddhists, the hard Christians. These people ain't a day on nothing. Even I'm saying Farrakhan, he's trying to quote stuff out the book now. What are you doing? You're a Muslim or are you trying to serve? But then he putting down the Bible. But that's a whole, that's why don't worry about him. Watch those that's coming in the name of Christ. Keep reading. And you shall hear of wars. And rumors of war. Uh huh. See that she be not troubled. All of these signs is pointing to the second coming. Go ahead. For all these things must come to pass. Uh huh. But the end is not yet. The end ain't yet. Go ahead, brother. For a nation shall rise against nation. Yes, sir. And kingdom against kingdom. We see it. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. I mean, looking at TV, people are just like reading the Bible. If you got some understanding, everything is in place. Go ahead and read. All these are the beginning of sorrow. And people cry now. Nah, it's so hard. The prices are so high. They gas. It's a, look here. This is just the beginning. What's going to happen when you get down to the thick of it? Go ahead and read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. That's right. He's a servant of God. He's the one that's preaching the gospel. Go ahead. And shall kill you. No, no. Even before the tribulation? Go ahead. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Why are they hate you for his name's sake? They hate Jesus so much. If you say what he said, they kill you. And we ain't going to read. You can jot this down in your notes. John 16 and 1 says, it's going to come a time when they, they that the kill you, thinking they're doing God's service. Go ahead and read. 10. And then shall many be afflicted. Be a what? Offended. Go ahead. And shall betray one another. Uh huh. And shall hate one another. Hey, it's coming close. Go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. What is their job to do? That's why you see all these priests are they coming out here to deceive you? Satan is sending his boys and they on their job. They trying to keep you away from that truth. Go ahead and read. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What's 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 what a love at people? They've got a thing they do in New York now. They used to do in Chicago when you see a young sister on the bus stop or something and she ain't paying no attention, then you hit her in the eye. What kind of folly is that, man? I'm talking about nine or ten girls, eyes black and swole up. They was doing it in Chicago for a while, but it was on the L and everything. But it was men, though. Dude, walk up to the cat, get close to me. I'm watching him like a hog. I said, he might drop one on, but I'm going to get one on his head. I bet. But this, this is fooling. But this is the love of men that waxing cold. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead and read some more. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And what's really holding this thing up? 14th verse. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's what let me know we got the truth. Because there's been people been preaching the gospel all over the world. But they ain't preaching this gospel. And listen and see when you hear it. You don't hear it until you come to the Israel of God. But let's keep moving now. He said, if you do good, this is what the Lord will do to you. Let's go to Zephaniah, the second chapter. Zephaniah, you know that book you read all the time? Let's go check that out. 
Zephaniah 2. You know, the funny books, people don't even read them. They can't even pronounce it. I ain't going to read that book. I don't know what his name is. Don't let it deceive you, people. It's good, good, good word of God. Zephaniah 2, and we pull pick it up at verse 1. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to see can your spiritual eyes catch this. I'm going to see if you're using that third eye, which is that mind. See, sometimes you got to use that head for more than just perm. You got to read that book, people. Eat that roll. We got four more to go after this, people. Four more, and we there. Zephaniah 2 and verse 1. We're going to wait. I still the page is turning. I still the page is turning. Man, the place is so beautiful, man. Lord, really bless y'all, but he's going to send y'all so many people in there, you're going to have to have a shoe spoon to get these people in there. That's a blessing. I'm loving that, man. Keep up the good work. I don't know what y'all doing. Keep doing it. Two, two, Zephaniah, two and one. Okay, go ahead, brother. Gather yourselves together. Yes. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desire. There ain't no nation on this earth not desire more than Israel. But go ahead. Before the decree bring forth, uh -huh. before the day pass as the chaff, go ahead. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, go ahead. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, what should you do? Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, uh -huh. which have brought his judgment. And what else? Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Ain't that beautiful? Seek mightiness, seek meekness. It may be you may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. That's how you're going to escape this thing. And where's he going to hide you at? In the wilderness. Didn't we read it? But in case we didn't understand it, let's take a look at it. Let's look at the Lord's secret place of safety. Let's go to Psalms 91. Well, yeah, we rolling now. We coming down the whole street. We're going to open up the jets and let it bump. Like they said, pop the trunk and let it bump. But you know, they told me, they said, quit using that old slang talk. They told me, I, I got to get better with that. Please forgive me. I don't mean no harm. Psalm 91. It's just where I come from. You know what I'm saying? Psalm 91 and 1. Let's see this secret place the Lord got here. We're going to wait on you, though. We're going to wait on you because we want to read this together. You got to know where this is. So next time you hear about the Lord hiding you, don't think of rapture. The Lord ain't rapture you nowhere. <clears throat> he got a place on this earth to hide you. See, the Lord, he showed you things. Sometimes you can be looking for your keys. They got them in your hand. You can't even see them. You all let your, where did I get you my key? You know what I'm saying? I didn't make your key right there in your hand, bro. <laughs> but you know how that flesh again, it get crazy. But the Lord can hide you. He ain't got to take you nowhere. He can hide you right here on this earth. Psalm 91 and 1. Okay, go ahead. What did it say? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of, of the Almighty. No better place to be. Go ahead. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Uh -huh. My God, in him will I trust. And you think, you say no secret place. You ask some of your church members, hey, uh, can you tell me where that secret place of the Most High is? And see what they can ask. You will get a thousand different answers. He said, okay, thank you. But go ahead and read. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl uh -huh. and from the noisome pestilence. See, this is great tribulation here. Go ahead. He shall cover thee with his feathers uh -huh. and under his wings shall thou trust. Go ahead. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. The truth is going to be your shield and buckle. That's going to protect you. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. No. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Why am I not afraid? Because I'm in the secret place of the most high. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Uh-huh. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. You ain't worried about it. Go ahead. A thousand shall fall at thy, at thy side. Uh-huh. And ten thousand at thy right hand. Go ahead. But it shall not come nigh thee. Uh-huh. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Ain't that something you just going to be able to look at like you're watching a big TV screen? But it ain't going to come now yet. Go ahead and read. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, yes, even the most high, thy habitation. Go ahead. 
There shall no evil befall thee. Uh -huh. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. He'll keep you from getting hurt. And look at people, the angels watching over that place. Can't nothing touch it, can't nothing get in it, and can't nothing do no damage to you. You ain't got no bugs or nothing trying to bite you or nothing in there. Let's see what the Lord going to do to this wilderness, this place of safety, where he going to hide you at. Let's take a look at it again in Revelation, the 12th chapter. And we're going to show you how the Lord going to deal with this place. This is where the Lord going to hide his people from the time like it never was before and it never shall be again, which the seven seals are inside that the first seal is the beginning of great tribulation. The sixth seal is when we see that eclipse, what they call the moon turning to blood, the sun come black and sackcloth of hair, the stars fall, the heavens roll back, and you're going to be able to look at Jesus. And he's going to start pouring out. The time period known as great tribulation is over for the saints. And the time period known as the day of the Lord is getting ready to begin. But now, let's see what the Lord said, how he was going to hide you. Revelation 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 6. What did it say? And the woman fled into the wilderness, uh -huh. where she had a place prepared of God. Now make a note of that. This woman got a place prepared of God. Go ahead and read. That they should feed her there. Uh huh. A thousand two hundred and three score days. How long was that, people? Y'all with me, boy? Somebody been learning some. Somebody being taught the book. I'm talking about way before I got down here too. Y'all know this thing. I'm glad to hear that. Skip down to verse fourteen now. Go ahead and read. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Uh huh. That she might fly into the wilderness. Go ahead. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. But where is this place this woman is hiding at? In the wilderness. Is that right or wrong? But now, just like he did to our forefathers when we came out of Egypt, what was our first stop, people? The wilderness. And if you want to know what the Lord's going to do in the future, Go and check out the past because he's doing the same thing. That's how the Lord see you. That's how you know you ain't going to get raptured. He didn't rapture you in Egypt, did he? And he ain't going to do it in the future because he said, I'm God and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. But now, let's go look at this place that he got prepared for you. Let's go to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. The Lord is so beautiful and so good, people. You'll be a fool not to serve. That's all I can tell you. I would too. And I ain't planning on being no fool. I've been there all my life. I don't want to go back there no more. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Isaiah 41 and 17. Let's look at this place that's being prepared for this woman. Okay, go ahead. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, uh -huh. and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Right, so when you in the wilderness and you thirsty, you can't get no water. You know there ain't no water out in the desert. What is the Lord going to do? 18th verse, go ahead. I will open rivers in high places uh -huh. and fountains in the midst of the valley. Go ahead. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. What? And the dry land springs of water. Look at the goodness of God. Why is he going to rapture you off the earth? He's doing all this to the wilderness, people. Go ahead and read. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, uh -huh. the shitter tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. Go ahead. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine, and the box tree together. He got all these different trees from all over the world. Wherever you come from, you're going to have something in the wilderness to remind you of home. Ain't this the Lord? Do you understand what you're reading here, people? Go ahead and read. That they may see, and know, and consider, and understand together, 
that the hand of the Lord has done this. Yes. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. It's all right to rejoice over that, people. Rejoice. I love it, too. I'm happy. I'm dancing in the street. Now, turn back to Isaiah 35. But do you see how that wilderness is prepared for this woman? He got the place already ready for it. Just like when you came up out of Egypt, you're going to do the same thing. But it's going to be in every land, wherever you've been scattered at. We can show you the ships and how the Lord going to come back and get you and everything. Which way he's going to. It's all here. But we just can't do it in one sin. That's why you got to keep coming and get fed that good word of God at the Israel of God. But now, 35 and 1. Now, 35 and 1. Okay. Wait a minute. I see there's some page. Go in. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. What did he call it? The wilderness. Because this is the place of safety. This is where the Lord going to hide you at. Go ahead and read. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. What do you mean to tell the rose? You know, uh, the desert going to blossom? Ain't nothing out there but sand. But you know, that's how the Lord preserves the land. Ain't never been tilled. It's some of the freshest land on this earth. Never been tilled, never been sown. Go ahead and read. It shall blossom abundantly. Yes, it will. And rejoice even with joy and sing. That's going to be a time to sing there. Go ahead. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. Uh-huh. The excellency of Carmel. Go ahead. And Shebron. Uh-huh. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. That's right, because when you're out there in the wilderness, you're going to see grass and reeds and rushes and vegetables, everything just start busting and growing. Go ahead and read. Strengthen ye the weak hand uh -huh. and confirm the feeble knees. See, this is what you're supposed to be letting the people know. Just hold on a little bit. You're going to be straight. Even if you're lame and sick, you're going to be all right. Go ahead and read. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, uh -huh. be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Yes, sir. Even God with the recompense, he will come and save you. So don't worry about it. Your time you focus on, keep Keep it to God's commandments and work on the fruits of the spirit, patience, long suffering, brotherly kindness, temperance, uh, loving kindness, tender mercy, long suffering. Because now you're building up the character of God. You're becoming like God. God is being created in you. But go ahead and read. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Even if you're blind, the Lord will open your eyes and let you see. Go ahead and read. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Go ahead. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. That's right. That's why I got to throw that cane across in the river. Go ahead and read. And the tongue of the dumb sing. The tongue of the dumb going to sing. The cat can't even talk. He's saying. Go ahead and read. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. What? And streams in the desert. Go ahead. And the parched ground shall become a pool. Uh-huh. And the thirsty land springs of water. Oh, my God. Go ahead. In the habitation of dragons. Where each slave Go ahead. shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Out there in the desert, this is what your God going to do for you. Go ahead and read. And then highway shall be there. Uh-huh. And the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Say, ain't no, ain't no fool going to be able to get that. You got to know the Lord. You got to be keeping his commandments to get this place. Go ahead and read. The unclean shall not pass over it. Uh-huh. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men. The fool shall not err therein. Go ahead. No lion shall be there. You ain't got to worry about no lion running up on you. Because during the, the thousand years of peace, the Lord make the beast peace. But at this time, ain't no lion going to be there out in the desert. Go ahead and read. Nor ravenous beast shall go up there on. Uh-huh. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. The redeemed is going to walk there. Go ahead. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their head. Woo, that's going to be a glorious day. Go ahead and read. They shall obtain joy and gladness, uh -huh. and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And I mean the Lord's house is going to be called a house of prayer for all people. This is what the Lord's going to do for his people. But look, I got to leave you with this here. If you in these false churches, this is what the Lord tell you. This is what you got to watch out for. This is going to be the last scripture. Uh, so if you got any announcements, this is the one. This is going to be it. Just go to Jeremiah 14 and 14. Jeremiah 14 and 14. 
Jeremiah 14 and 14. We gonna we gonna wait. We waiting on everybody. Jeremiah fourteen and fourteen. Okay, go ahead. Then the Lord said unto me, "The prophets prophesy lies in my name." This is what they doing every Sunday morning. I sent them not; neither have I commanded them; neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. That's why you didn't know these things that we was reading today. A lot of you know them, but some didn't. But you just got to get the word of God. But quit listening to these false prophets because they're telling you a thing of naught. Naught means for nothing. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name. Go ahead. And I sent them not. Didn't he tell you, he said, watch out for those that's coming in his name? Go ahead and read. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. Uh-huh. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And you're like, they tell you not, man, you ain't got to watch out for no great tribulation. Jesus ain't coming back to get you. He said, okay, just keep waiting. You don't have to argue with him. You don't have to fight for the Lord. He doesn't know how to handle his own business. Go ahead and read 16. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them. That's going to be a terrible time, people. This is what happened to Israel. They kept listening to these false prophets, and the Lord brought the sword, and the death was so bad they didn't have nobody to bury the people. But this is the reward you get for listening to these false prophets. Because the Lord, he's not only going to get these false prophets, he's going to get the ones that's listening to him. This is the scripture I'm trying to get you to see. But, and look how, read, start at 16 again and keep reading. What does it say? And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem uh -huh. because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them. And what else? Them, their wives nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. So the thing we got to do is get away from them, that wickedness and get our children away from it. Stay close to the word. Don't deny his name. You got a little strength, and the Lord will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the face of the earth. I thank you for your time. I hope somebody learned something for what I tried to bring. Thank you, Brother Fajal. Good reading.